Welcome everybody to this week's episode of Directed IRA Podcast with yours truly, Mark Kohler and my amazing co-host, Matt Sorensen. Uh, I was going to flip a coin on who got to bring us in, introduce the show, and Matt said, Mark, you just take it. Just He gave yeah. me the layup. He was just like, you can have the stats. Yeah. That's a, that's uh, a selfish NBA player right there. You know? Yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm like John Stockton, you know, I just, I just want to get assists. I don't care about scoring points. It's, it's a team effort, you know. Team effort. Yeah. yeah. Scotty Pippen. He's like, my MJ, go ahead. Just Yeah, you, you know, can have it. You can have it. You can be the greatest player ever. I'll just be your support mm -hmm. role. Anyway, for you. Uh, yeah. For those those kids out there, you don't know what we're talking about. And I'm sure a lot of kids listening to the Directed IRA podcast. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For these, are, these, are, <laughs> these are NBA players of old. Uh, yeah. And, all right. Well, this is uh, – well, this is episode two. We're going to break this down into, you know, some digestible chunks here as we go through the podcast. We'll be doing some open forum stuff as well, like we do on our other podcast, the Main Street Business Podcast, formerly known as Refresh Your Wealth Podcast. And um, today, though, we're going to talk about um, what your self-directed IRA can invest into. Um, and this can be your solo K also or any other account is self-direct, your HSA, Coverdell, whatever account you like to self-direct. That's what we're going to talk about. What investments can you make? We'll go over what's restricted. And we're going to run through some of the common investments that people like to make that we're seeing all day here at, at Directed IRA where we're handling these accounts. Yeah. And I would just add, this is a simulcast of sorts. We This is also being recorded. That sounds very, that sounds very important, the simulcast. It does. It does. Like we've got the technology to simulcast, whatever. But yeah. we are also uh, recording this video version on uh, for distribution on YouTube. So for those of you that would like to watch this on YouTube later and it's easier for you, don't do it while you're driving, please. Uh, it's hard enough to keep you awake, let alone distract your eyes. So we don't need that double okay. liability, double jeopardy. But uh, if you catch us on YouTube watching the show, I am preparing to do a little screen share here a little bit later because I said, Matt, we need to really get pie chart. You know, I'm a visual guy. I like um, to see, okay, what does this pie chart look like of where all these investments uh, types of assets are? Uh, but let's get some definitions out first. Um, yeah. Matt, when you say, I think everybody needs to hear this again. That was very subtle what Matt said. When we say what you can invest in your IRA, we are using a, that as a very, very broad term, yeah. IRA. It's, yeah, yeah. like you said, Matt, go through the list. Yeah, we're using that as a broad term. It's kind of the main account would be a self-directed IRA. That's the most popular. And this is whether it's a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA, a SEP IRA, a simple, doesn't matter. Uh, but this could also be health savings account, a covered out. It could be your solo 401k. Um, so all these accounts fall under a similar set of rules of what you can and can't do. And so we're going to highlight those and also talk about um, what are the assets people are buying and what are the things you should know in the process when you're buying these certain types of popular assets? And we'll throw out some fun ones too, some kind of interesting yeah. ones you might not have thought about that you could do with the, your IRA. Yeah, and we'd hope that just dropping those terms, uh, Coverdale, HSA, 401, we're going to have podcasts specifically dedicated to each one of those topics. Yeah. And so if you're going to binge on this podcast, which we hope you choose to do. We'd ask also, please give us a five-star review if you're enjoying this. We're yeah. trying to make this the number one informative, accurate podcast on self-directing in the country. We know there's a couple others out there, but saying this humbly, we are actually doing this and standing behind our advice as an actual law firm with malpractice insurance. We're both lawyers. I'm a CPA as well. Matt has the most read uh, and most successful book in America on this topic in its second edition, the Self-Directed IRA Handbook. Now, I just say that that wasn't a, a uh, selfish move to self-promote. That was to let you know, you're hopefully you feel you're at the right place. So yeah. if you were to call us and go, I want to do it, whatever we say, we stand behind as licensed professionals with malpractice insurance. So we're just not out there, blah, blah, blah. And we try to make it fun and interesting. So yeah. Um, and we self-direct our accounts ourselves. We do this ourselves. And I think that helps too. A lot of, a lot of people just like to talk about it and go sell you in a holiday inn every weekend on some, some, something dumb. And, you know, no, we do this for our own accounts. And so we have that same mentality and want it to be practical and, 
and, and how do we actually build and save for retirement? Because for us, the goal is we just want the biggest account at the end of the day, right? When we hit 59 and a half, we just want our account to be as big as possible. Um, so, all right, well, let's dive in. Um, let me just kind of hit what you can't do. Because that's not, that shouldn't take that long. Okay, right? fair enough. You're going to get, and, and one thing, let me tell everybody too, of course, our, one of our co-sponsors in a firm and company that uh, Matt and I are both officers in is the directedira.com trust company, directed IRA trust company. And so when I asked, when we used to ask each other, maybe five, 10 years ago, I wonder what most self-directed investments are. We didn't know. We didn't have our own trust company with thousands of accounts. Now we do. And so when I go, Matt, tell me the spreadsheet or you know, share with me what we got, Matt's got it in a uh, client, confidential, uh, client confidential spreadsheet, attorney, priv uh, attorney privilege <laughs> document that we're not going to put up on the web here. I'm trying to get the words out. But I'm gonna, we're going to get this information th out throughout the show, and I'm going to put it in a pie chart for you. So this is extremely accurate based on a cross-section of our accounts at Directed IRA. And so, uh, and we're going to do the most common to the most complex, but I like what Matt's saying first, what can't we invest in? All right. So, yeah. Okay. This is, this is quite easy actually. And the good news is there's not a lot of things you can't invest in. If that's not on the list. So the way IRAs work is you can invest in anything you want as long as it's not restricted or as long as it doesn't constitute a prohibited transaction which we're going to touch on a private transaction briefly. And we're going to do the next podcast is going to dive deep into that. Yeah. And that's, a new, that's, a, and Matt makes an interesting nuance. He says, you can invest in anything as long as you don't screw up the process. That's a separate topic, right? right. Some people will say you can't invest in that. Oh no, you can, if you do it right. So that's a really important distinction, Matt, you made. Yeah. So okay. here are the three things that are restricted in the code. This is what, by law, you cannot own with the retirement account, IRA, solo K, whatever retirement. Life insurance, okay? Can't do it. You just can't buy it. I don't think anybody was listening to this podcast wanting to buy life insurance with their self-directed IRA. Off the list. Next one. S corporation stock. Now, S corporation stock is it's not that it's restricted to IRAs. It's really that IRAs don't qualify as an S corporation shareholder under S corporation tax rules. So S corps off the table. Now we can do LLCs, C corps, limited partnerships all day long. We'll have another podcast on IRA LLCs or checkbook IRAs. And we'll talk about LLCs and LPs today. So just the S corp is the only entity type of stock or units you can't buy. The last one is collectibles. Now collectibles was one you could buy at the beginning, but people abused it so much oh. that Congress had to write a new law and say, you can't invest in collectibles. Yeah, which brings us to a, a example that has been coined and used over and over again on major news networks for years now due to Matt Sorensen. <laughs> Why can I not invest in a wine collection? <laughs> this, is, this is the old joke. I, well, well, here's this is the problem. famous joke. This is yeah, very good. It's a great one. Yeah. It's a good one. Because those wine collections turn into bottle collections. All right? Oh, that was so good. Yeah. You know, it's delivery. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's, what's the, uh, that's like Jim Gaffigan and hot pockets. Yeah. Or, uh, Brian Regan in the emergency room, yeah. Matt Sorensen and a, and a bottle collection. I mean, it's right up there. Yeah. Right there. I've seen other people use it. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. They stole it. Yeah. It's all right. Um, but it's true. I mean, there was abuse. People were buying collectible cars, driving them out on the road. I had a client that bought art and he still has it because he bought it pre the rules, like way back in the, in the seventies or eighties in a Keo plan back in the day that's gotten oh rolled God. over into an IRA. They still own this art in it. It's interesting. So, uh, but you can't buy those assets. Okay. Those are restricted collectibles. The one that really comes up that, that you need to know about is if you want to buy precious metals, we have a lot of clients that buy precious metals. I would probably say 10% of our accounts, maybe, you know, self direct investors are buying precious metals, like actual physical gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Those are the only four metals you can buy with an IRA. If you're like, well, can I buy diamonds with an IRA? Well, nope. I, oh, I told my wife that zirconian was extremely valuable. Yeah. 
and I cannot invest in a zirconium. I know you can't buy it with your IRA. Yep. No bronze either. You know, if you want to buy that bronze metal, can't buy the bronze. It's got to be bronze. gold, silver, platinum, or palladium. Yeah, that's because third place is. Yeah, it's not good enough for your IRA. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Yeah. So uh, now, also, there's another thing. Now, I wanted to make a distinction here too. You can't invest in S corp stock. Doesn't don't don't take that as I can't invest in a business that would typically be an S corp. It's yeah. just it's not the business inside the S corp we're having a problem with. It's the structure of the S corp, which brings us to the businesses inside an entity, whether it's a C corp or LLC. The IRS throws out this blanket statement that you cannot invest in something that's illegal. Because you'll say, well, I've got this LLC I set up in XYZ wherever and it does prostitution. Well, that's illegal. <laughs> and um, th we won't allow that. Thank you for that attorney client information. You know, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, just if any of you were wondering, it's illegal. Well, I mean, if but they the had a brothel, they had a brothel in Nevada, apparently it's legal there. Yes, that's true. The Mustang Ranch or whatever it's called. Uh, publicly traded C Corp. But here's the thing uh, that is kind of on the bubble, and that is marijuana and um, the sale of it. Cannabis. So yeah. it may be legal at the state level, but it's not le legal at the federal level. So that's, and that's a very common one. Many people yeah. are investing in that. So, Matt, where, where did we draw the line at directed IRA and with most custodians? So, what we've done is, while it's still federally a controlled substance, Technically, it'd be a crime for your IRA to own it because your IRA is participating. It could be this racketeering criminal enterprise if you think about it. Yeah. And so we don't want your IRA or our account owning ownership in a company that is selling what is a federally controlled substance and could be a crime. So, um, so you can't do that with your IRA. Now, what we have done is clients' IRAs have owned real estate that is leased to a dispensary or that's a grower or you know farming or whatever it is and so if they're owning the land that's okay because their ownership interest is real property they may be leasing to another party that is separate you know and so so that would be okay but you can't own a share in the company llc or corporation if it actually owns and sells the you know the yeah. Mary Jane. now you, some of you may think this is funny with the example i'm going to give here because we're going to start with the basics too but I had a client yesterday, Matt, sent me a text. Um, I don't want to say his name here on the show. He, he's a regular listener. Sent me a picture of his new yacht he bought down in Miami. Now, this is not a yacht that he's going to use. He bought it with an LLC. And there's a, a large market down there of people that visit Florida that would like to rent a yacht for an evening, a weekend, or a 10-day period. So he's got this yacht and a rental pool, just like an Airbnb. And it's, it's already projected to cash flow this year. Now, when he first told me he was going to buy this, I was trying to talk him into doing it with his 401k. Regrettably, we were just one year of contribution away from probably getting it put together where he could do it. He just didn't have enough money in his retirement account. And he didn't want to go get a loan. He wanted to make sure this thing really yeah. cash flowed. But let's say we bought that with the IRA, which we're going to come to some of these items like a boat. Could his boat go out into the ocean, down to South America, pick up pot and bring it back and sell it in Florida? No, because it is running drugs. Um, now, the state of Florida may say that's fine. You're transporting an illegal substance, we don't care. But for federal law, his IRA could not own a boat. And we have clients that buy planes with their IRAs or 401ks. So if your plane was gonna fly out of Southern California down to some strip in Mexico, pick up you know, your growth yeah. of marijuana and bring it back and sell it in California. California has no problem with that. Yeah. The feds do. And so Mark's been, I think them. Mark's been binging on narcos or some drug shows on Netflix right now. <laughs> yeah. The real question is, could your IRA invest in the car wash with Skylar? Yeah. Breaking bad. Probably not. Right. Cause it's illegal. They were laundering yeah. money. Yeah. But yeah. I know it's, it's funny not. to use these examples, but it's true. But we've had clients buy car washes with their self IRAs. Yep. Now, most of those clients, by the way, on these assets, from the yacht, the plane, the car wash, okay, they're almost always using an LLC, an IRA LLC, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about in one of the next upcoming podcasts. That's where you're, rather than your IRA buying the, the yacht itself or the car wash itself, the IRA owns an LLC 100% and puts cash in it 
the LLC in turn goes and buys the car wash or buys the, the plane or yacht and then leases it out. Now remember, yachts and, and the plane, you cannot have personal use of that. These, is, yeah. these what we're talking about here, whether it's these assets or real property, you have to buy per assets for investment purposes. You're not having personal use. Yeah. So we're not talking about buying real estate you live at or stay at, right? These are investment assets you're leasing out. Now that's yeah. a little teaser Matt's giving you regarding prohibited transactions, yeah. which if you're binging on the podcast, you're going to want to watch that one next. So I, I know I went a little deep with some unique ideas, but <laughs> I want you to kind of have an open mind. It's fun. I like yeah. to be creative. Um, I think yeah. I'm the only creative CPA in the country sometimes that. Uh, yeah. And we see that. I mean, I've reviewed, I probably every other week I'm reviewing a deal that has cannabis involved and what's the ownership stake. Are they owning the cannabis and or the company or not? It's very popular. It's a fast growing industry. And apparently there's high profits. You can make a lot of green there, you know? Oh, I, yeah. okay. I like that. That's good. Good. <laughs> so you can get okay. some high profits. All right. Um, okay. Let's, you want to hit some, let's just go through some of the common ones. Yeah. Tell us number one. I asked Matt before the show started, what is the number one asset that people buy with their retirement accounts? Real yeah, real estate, baby. And yeah. if you think about it, what is the one of the most, it probably is the number one asset that has created American wealth. Yeah. yeah. It is going to be, it's real estate. Yeah. It might be small business, but we'll, we'll talk about that next. Private companies, IRAs can invest in those too, but real estate. And these are rental properties in general it could be raw land though you could okay, be buying I land a question for you let me ask you this because yeah. this is for the pie chart that we're going to reveal later here on the podcast and maybe we'll even put it up on the site main street Biz. i'm uh, sorry directed ira podcast page this pod this uh pie chart might be fun i'm gonna ask you matt out of a hundred accounts out of a thousand accounts how many are real estate just real estate as a whole <laughs> You have to let me come back. I told you I could run a report on this and I didn't do that yet. I know. So. Well, give me a rough number now. Give me a rough number. 60? I'll give you the exact number. Just, oh, okay. You got to let me like, you got to give an example here so I can. You know, okay. So this, here's what I was going to say about real estate as Matt's digging this up. And then I'm just going to, we're going to go off the cuff on this, on this part. It could be raw land. It could be single family homes. It could be commercial. It could be duplexes, low income housing. Uh, so when we say real estate, it could be any of those. I just had a conference with a client three hours ago that bought a mobile home in their retirement account. So the, the, any of that is considered real estate. And, and then I did ask Matt earlier also, how many of the people that did buy real estate just bought, the, bought it in the name of the IRA in, in versus an LLC? And the far, far majority, I think Matt said 80%, use an LLC because it's easier. You can go to closing, you can control the management of it, the cash flow. You don't have to call the direct the IRA hotline every time you want to hire a pest control service or collect rent. You you have the LLC and you can be the manager of that LLC. You can't pay yourself. That's next podcast. We'll talk about that. But you can control the LLC, write the checks, pay the bills, and that is a way of or a form of owning the real estate. Remember, that's different. So the asset that we're talking about first is real estate. And Matt, drum roll, do we have it? <laughs> Close? He's running reports. Matt, you know, he's got this that. engineering side to him. I love it. He won't just give us a number. He's going to make it accurate. Well, if we're going to do it, we better do it right. You yeah. know? Okay. So, Let, now, while we're on the real estate topic, I, hey, I'm a lawyer. I can, I can talk forever here. So when Matt gives me the, you know, points at yeah. me, he goes, run with it. Um, another example of this is, just to play with this real estate topic, my health savings account, eight years ago, I bought a low-income housing property in uh, Elgin, Illinois, essentially a suburb um, of Illinois. It was a low-income housing area with a Section 8 federally guaranteed rent payment property. And it's a little, old gra a little grandma there. And uh, I got seller financing. We're going to talk, we have other podcasts about debt using leverage. But I got seller financing. I put down $4,000 on a $40,000 property and got a $36,000 note in the name of my IRA. Wasn't even on my credit. Topic for another show. But I bought this little low-income housing property. 
and the cash goes in to my health savings accounts, LLC. So my health savings account created an LLC that owns the property. So the underlying yeah. asset is real estate, but I used an LLC to complete the transaction. And whenever money comes out of this project, it goes to the LLC and I can take money out of the LLC for any medical expense, any time. The LLC doesn't even file a tax return. It's done, hidden forever, legitimately, honestly. And so that, that's just a huge point there. Okay, yeah. Matt, it looks like you've got a number for us. Okay, what do you want to know? You want to know how much is real estate? Or how much is, what do you want to know? Well, I was going to first say how much is real estate. Can you break it into types of real estate? Well, I can break it. Who's using an IRA LLC or not? Because some of the assets are IRA. Okay, let's say real estate without an LLC. That's about, um, hmm, that's about 5% of accounts. Okay. Directly owning real property. Okay. Or the IRA or the retirement accounts on title directly. Okay. Real estate with LLC. We're talking like, um, we're talking about, about one third of accounts or so one, one fourth. One fourth. Yeah. About 20, 20 to 30%. Okay. So I'm going to go right in the middle, 27.5. And then you said how many was without an LLC? 5%. Um, correct. Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to keep doing this. This is good. All right. Now, um, Matt, the question I have for you is just while we're on this, just for two seconds. Well, do you see people buy more cash flow property than property that's kind of held for appreciation? Yeah, for sure. Like 95% of people are buying rental property. Well, okay. that's not true. Actually, let me go back. You brought land is pretty, you know, that's like the one in a hundred. But a lot of people are flipping still. A lot of people are buying properties that are flipping. So it's not like a buy and hold. It's a you know a short term deal. So that that's maybe twenty percent of people who are flipping. The vast majority though is really plain vanilla single family rentals, and that's what I'm talking about here. Like they've got an IRA LLC that's buying a single family rental, or they've got they bought real estate directly in the IRA's name. Um, so, but let's walk through, let's go through how you do it. So let me, let me break this down. Cause I think it's now, just, stats, but I want to make sure people understand what the heck, how you do it. Like you set up an account. How do I do this, Matt? Okay. I thought you wanted to do, we're going to do a full show on the steps, but you just want to summarize it quickly. So it, at least people aren't stressed out. Yeah. I just want to let people know, like if you're buying real estate in your IRA, the first thing you got to know is. Like if this is my IRA, Matt Sorensen's IRA, Matt Sorensen's not buying the property. Matt Sorensen's not on the purchase contract, all right? Matt Sorensen's not cutting an earnest money check, okay? The buyer is directed trust company, FBO, Matt Sorensen IRA. The earnest money comes from the IRA or whatever your account is that's involved here. Now, if you're using an LLC, your IRA would have set up the IRA LLC and invested the money. But the first principle is the retirement account is buying the asset. It's putting the money in. It's gonna receive the income. It's gonna pay the expenses. You are personally only involved from a, a step back is directing the account, putting the account on ask, as the purchasing the asset, telling us how to send the money or whoever your IRA custodian is, you know, do this, do that, sign this document, process this. You know, you're instructing them what to do, but everything's being done in the name of your IRA. Now, if you have an IRA LLC, your IRA would have already put cash into the LLC and now you're managing the LLC doing those things and, and assets are in the name of the LLC. So, so to keep that in mind is, was you're out investing, buying real estate, everything's done in the name of the IRA. Now, when you manage the real estate, don't take a salary, don't take compensation. If you're a real estate agent, when you buy it, don't take a commission. Okay. Those all, cause these things called prohibited transactions for the IRA. Right. If you're going to fix the property, if there's a repair that needs to happen, the IRA is going to pay someone to fix it. Okay. So you're going to take kind of a step back. All right. Okay. So, and those are teasers folks, because we do whole shows on that today. Again, we're just talking about the most common assets and what you can and cannot put in any of these retirement accounts, 401ks to IRAs to HSAs. So I've got real estate without an LLC, rental real estate with an LLC, and flipping real estate with or without an LLC. 
Okay. Yeah. Next. Everybody that flips does an LLC. If you're going to flip a property, I've, we've never done one directly in the IRS. Okay, cool. I'll put with you're LLC. You're always going to do an LLC. Okay. Now, I asked you what was second after real estate. And I was kind of interested to hear what you said. That was Okay, go yeah. ahead. Drum roll. Actually, it, I'm looking at the numbers exactly right now. It is private companies. Mm -hmm. Limited partnerships, C corporations. So just business. Just yeah, just small business. Business. I might be investing in a limited partnership that owns a, an apartment building, you know, or maybe it's a private hedge fund. Maybe it's a startup company. You know, yesterday I gave a presentation to Tech Coast Angels, which is people making angel investments in startups with their okay. IRAs. So that's actually a very big asset class for us. Um, that's What's probably, the percentage of that? That's probably 20% of our assets, 25 Okay. I'll go 25. Okay. So business now, and again, I would say business would include uh, clients that are doing a, a, an Airbnb with a yacht or a plane or yeah. a restaurant or a delivery service or a cement company or a landscaping okay. company. You think of a company, there's been an IRA in history that's been a part owner. Very, very common. And yeah. if your brother-in-law is starting a business and comes says to you, Hey, I'd like to start a carpet installation company, you'd say, how much? Okay, and you need me, how much? 30 grand, and I'll give you 20% of the company, but I need this 30 grand. You, know, you can do it with your IRA. Yeah, So absolutely. that That's very, so that I'm just gonna call that small business. Yep, yeah, now your brother's company couldn't be an S Corp, but he could do an LLC or a C Corp, of course. Yep, yep. And, um, and remember, brother, siblings are not privated people for the private transaction. If you yeah. get Mark was pretty good in that little example there. Um, but a lot of these, frankly, are funds, you know, like they're the, they're the apartment building fund. It's the hedge fund. We've got a number of clients and they're, or they're the tech startup. So what those are, generally when you invest in those, you're going to have company documents. And you've got kind of the fund style documents, which has what's called a subscription agreement okay. that you're going to fill out. And it's going to say, my IRA is the buyer. Again, go back to this concept. You're not buying this dang subscription or into this limited partnership or this C Corp or this private fund, okay, or this private company. Your IRA is. So your the buyer is your IRA. The one thing that's important to know too, some of those investments, not all of them, but some of them make you be an accredited investor. But if you're personally accredited investor, because you got a million dollar net worth or two hundred thousand income single, three hundred thousand married, if you're personally accredited investor, your IRA qualifies as an accredited investor. And so, but those yeah. are um, the private company, private funds. Okay. P small business, private company. I'll put that slash private company. Now I want to, I want to report five. this live on the show. I just got a text from Hayden in our company. They just had a baby boy and Aww. so excited. Eight pounds, 15 ounces. Woo. That's a big, that's a big boy. Yeah. And we got a picture here at you can't oh, see on the camera, but just this little, this, little babies are so cute, you know, and they I smell, know. it's that, you're like, what is that smell? You know, it's, it's just, it's baby you know, powder. I don't they've know. They've done it, nothing wrong. Yeah, you know? just little babies. They're, just, they're just perfect. Yep. So, uh, until they blow out their diaper and then you're like, ah, and, and it, he named it Mark and Matt, Mark and Matt, just like Mark, Matt. What's the middle name? Oh, is it in first name? No. Oh, nice. <laughs> he did not. I was teasing him. You're going to name it Mark Matthew Gibby. I love it. That's a great way to go. Matthew Mark. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be happy with middle name, Mike. I'm okay there. Yeah, I could, I could live with a middle name. Anyway, set word. congratulations to Hayden. All right. Now, small business, private company. What's next? That's where the N word comes in. Notes, right? Did you say? Yep. Notes. And this could be secured like you're lending on real property and you've got a mortgage or deed of trust securing it or even unsecured are a little more risky, right? <laughs> and so we've got secured notes and unsecured notes. Let's just say now, notes, how much, what's the percentage of our accounts that do loan, lending? That's going to be about mm, 10%. Okay. All right. In total dollars. Okay. We've got 20 more percent to allocate here. Yep. This is good. Now, precious metals, was that your, now yep. notes, people. Let me hit yeah, notes. Let me notes. explain notes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So when you're doing a note, you know, you're playing the bank here. Okay. So obviously you're going to do your due diligence like the bank does on whoever you're lending to. Right. And if, particularly if it's unsecured, you might want to get a personal guarantee if you're loaning to a company unsecured of the owner, you know what I mean? You got to be careful here. 
Um, you spent years building this money in your retirement account. Don't throw it away by loaning someone money. Secured is great because you're gonna have a lien on the property. Now the lender on the note, again, is Directed Trust Company, FBO, whoever your account is or, or whatever your custodian is. So Directed Trust Company, FBO, Mark Kohler, IRA, he loans money. Um, and and that, that's essentially it. You're gonna have payback terms. There's gotta be all outlined in the note, like just kind of regular documents. Generally, you're gonna have a title or escrow company involved that's gonna escrow the money, particularly for a secured note. For an unsecured note, you might not, but you could. So, and then of course, the payments are coming back to your IRA. You know, now they could mail you the check. Some people are like, well, I wanna get the, the note payments. It's gonna be written to my IRA, but can they mail it to me and then I'll forward it to you guys? Cause I just wanna make sure the payments are happening. That's okay. You can also use a third party, party payment processor. There's a lot out there many that our clients have used and we can help with if you want a third party payment processor that kind of does your collection and we'll send them a statement and a, and a bill every month and tell them to you know, pay your note. So, um, so notes, very common. Um, and your bank, or sorry, your IRA is basically plan bank. You're the lender. Okay, all right. Now, uh, after notes, would it be precious metals? I'm guessing. Yeah, I would say precious metals, yep. So that's about nine percent. That's, that's, that's about another ten percent. Mm, no. Yep, it's about mm, it's about five to seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to put seven percent. Okay. Uh, precious metals. Now, Matt mentioned this a little earlier. This is one where you can't just buy gold bars and have them sitting in a drawer or under the kitchen sink and hiding them around your house. You have to go right. through a dealer that has a repository for the, I think, is that the right term? Repository, yeah. Depository, yeah. Depository, okay. So in Goldfinger, they had the depository <laughs> at Fort Knox. Yeah. Goldfinger, with a very popular woman's name that was the, I won't bring that up. My wife hates that movie simply because of, what's her name, Galore. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that was a depository. So you have to have a depository to own your gold and hold it for you. Right, to store it. Correct. But you could and, you could literally drive there, walk in, and go. I want to see my gold, and you yeah, can go see it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And we've had lots of clients use different dealers, and and you've got to store it. Um, like like Mark said, and there's storage fees for storing it. Um, they've got to be per, uh, properly licensed to store the metal because precious metals have rules about what asset, what metals you can buy. Remember, and then there's also metals that uh, there's also rules with respect to how do you store it. And the IRS has came out and said, you cannot do home storage. Okay, you cannot store it at your home with an IRA. Even if you're using an IRA LLC, you cannot do home storage. You know, For those who buy precious metals with an IRA LLC, you could use a safety deposit box at a bank in the LLC's name, but you cannot do home storage of your metals. And I know people that love precious metals, they like them because it's so tangible. And you know, they, it's, it's cool to have at a dinner party maybe, you know. This gold bar I got here, it's in my IRA, you know. Um, but you can't do that. Okay, it's gotta be stored. Yeah, I like it. Now, um, this is a great opportunity. I've been wanting to do this because uh, if you had a depository like this with a, like a little ID number, you could have it embedded maybe under your skin uh, as in Jason Bourne. Uh, <laughs> and then if you had yeah. to, you could go to the depository mm -hmm. and get your gold. I mean, yeah. that would be really pretty cool. Any good like, you know, I've always wanted to get, have like a safety deposit box with like, yeah a gun in it, you know, a couple of passports, a stack yeah. of cash and like a gold bar. I think yeah. that's like the, that's like the right mix. That's like the combo package I would pick. You know, that's on my bucket list. I just got to do it. I need a safe deposit box. What'd you say? A gun? A gun, uh, a, a couple of passports, a passport. Know, in some, you know, in the name of like Peter Lemangelo or some, you know, yeah. something. Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. Uh, and maybe. then some cash, you know, it's a lot of cash, maybe some, maybe some foreign currency, some euros. And, yeah. uh, Oh, that'd yeah, be so cool. A gold bar. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Now after currency, uh, sorry, after precious metals, now we get to currency. And I say currency because that's going to bring in cryptocurrency and some of these digital yeah. currencies, right? Yeah. Now crypto can creep into some of the LLCs. I would say that's about 2% of accounts. Of currency. Okay. Yeah. Cryptocurrency. Um, might be a little more, might be, might be three to five, but um, it's hard to say because they're blended in the LLCs. Most clients buying crypto, well, all of our clients buying crypto are using an IRA LLC. So that's another asset. You can buy Bitcoin. I've got a movie, a video, a movie, 
I got a video. <laughs> you got your own movie. It's on IMDb. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can find it. It's on Godfather Amazon Prime. Bats. Yeah. Bitcoin. So, but you can buy cryptocurrency. I actually own some crypto in my LLC. Don't hold um, that against me. It's not to me. And you, you, gotta, you never know. It's like playing roulette. Yeah. You've got to put it well on, on it. double yeah. zero once in a while. You know, yeah. you just never know when it's going to hit. The awesome thing was I bought it when all of our clients were asking, how do you do this? Can you do it? And I'm like, I don't know. I'll try it. Let me throw five grand in it. And then I bought it and it kept like going up. So I kept buying more. Anyway, I was smart. I cashed out to get my money back. And I just let the, less, the, the rest ride when it really. Stayed. Matt won't tell you on the show how much he made, but it it'd make you unhappy. It, it, it was pretty good. So, uh, <laughs> but the hard but thing how, is but, like there's but, providers. Yeah. How is your Iraqi dinar doing though? Yeah, I don't have anything. Good, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my ex-in-laws gave me some for like Christmas one year and they told me, you're welcome. You're going to be a billionaire one day. I was like, dang it. <laughs> yeah. Now we've got, um, <laughs> it's not in my IRA. Okay. Um, but all right. we've got 19% of all accounts still unaccounted for. Okay. There's a lot of miscellaneous. Okay. Give me um, some fun. miscellaneous assets out there. Okay. Um, and those, those could like some tax lien. Oh, okay. Tax lien. Give, give me a number. Three or 4%. I would probably say one. Okay. Um, we've got convertible notes are actually a different category than the notes I gave you. Convertible notes are a lot of people investing into companies. Um, this is probably another 1%. Okay. Um, they're investing in companies where they can convert it to stock. So you can do that. You can have your IRA loan money to a company. And this is very popular in the startup world where you're the lender, but you have the right to convert your loan to the company into equity and to stock. Um, and so convertible notes. Um, <clears throat> we have... Um, Actually, we have another category of private placements um, that I didn't include in there. So this would be your typical funds. And that's about, that's about 4%, 5% actually. So I didn't, I didn't give you that. 4%, okay. And that's in addition to the, the limited partnership stuff I gave you earlier. And how, if we were, so it, it's a limited partnership, but what, what type of? It's just that we call it a, it's a, a fund. Private placement. Fund. Okay, fund. fund. Okay. Yeah. So, fund. so I'm going to say, okay, small business. Here's our number so far. Real estate, 33% of all types of real estate. Yeah. Small business, private company, 25%. Notes, 10%. Precious metal, 7 Currency, including cryptocurrency and all, you know, buying any sort of currency worldwide, 2%. Pre precious metals is 5 Oh, five. Okay. Yeah. 5%. Um, currency, 2%. Tax liens, 1%. Convertible notes, 1%. And then I'm going to put this one back up higher. Funds. So kind of like um, private. Yeah. Okay. When you say currency, I presume you're talking the foreign currency. That's probably like half a percent, if even that. That's right. not very big. Okay. There's a lot of clients invested in it, but they don't invest large amounts. So it's a relatively smaller amount total. Um, what else? The other one that's another category is, um, it's a separate little category here at about 2%, I would say, is um, uh, notes that are um, kind of more unique, like they bought a judgment maybe, or they bought a defaulted note. What are they called? There's a name for them. They're kind of like notes in default. Um, I know what. Ah. Oh. Um, okay, well, it'll come to you, but I was going to throw this out too. Is what about equipment? Equipment leasing, equipment like that are buying. I've got a client with some IRAs that have bought equipment yeah. in Hollywood that they use on production sets, and they yeah. rent that equipment out. There's I, most of those clients are going to use an LLC because to buy the equipment and to pay to get it repaired and lease it out on an ongoing basis, you're generally going to be in it. So those are probably in some of the LLC category. Okay. And I don't, right. that's hard for me to say in there, but we have an, we have another asset cat, just a category called other asset that could be lots of different things. Um, you know, this could be like the Super Bowl ticket that you, you bought and you sell for profit. This could be, um, cattle ranch. 
yeah, uh, cattle, cattle actually, livestock. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep, we've had that. Um, okay, so, so what I put here was LLCs with all sorts of stuff. Yep. Go for it. Um, now, this gets us to 100%. I'm going to share this on my screen. Uh, actually, I can't because, Corey, you've got the control of it here. I'm going to email this over to you. And then you can put it on the screen. Um, types of self-directed IRA accounts. So I'll go through the list now, just so everybody, for those that are listening via um, okay. podcast, real estate 33, small business 25%, notes 10%, precious metals 5 limited partnership funds or companies 5%, currency 2%, uh, defaulted notes, 2%, tax liens, 1%, convertible notes, 1%, and then 16% of everything under the sun. Just kind of LLCs with all sorts of stuff. Does that sound about right? Or should we pour more in real estate? I think real estate's higher yeah. than 33. Well, and- the LLCs, the hard thing is that we have a big IRA LLC category. So I don't know how to break that out as much. I, so that's, I'm just kind of guesstimating that. Yeah. So and it's there's private crypto in it. There's real estate. Some of the real estate's flipped, some of it's rentals. Yeah. So, but, uh, but you can see as we can just list these categories, what's kind of popular, what are people doing, what are things you thought you could, you know, you can invest in that you never knew. Um, and so there's, there's lots of investment opportunity out there. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think anybody should go to something that's just popular. Just go to what you know. That's the thing about self-directing is invest in what you know. Um, find the assets that you have a competitive advantage in in the marketplace rather than just picking a mutual fund or guessing in the stock market. Invest in the things that you know that you spend your time on that you have some expertise um, or at least willing to learn. And that's where we see clients actually have success in picking. Oh, no, okay, now I want to, I love it. And, and I want to throw, I just came to me what I wanted to say earlier. And this is where I think um, there's a discussion that has to be had because there's, people out there giving workshops saying you should never buy this type of asset in your retirement account. Now those people saying things like that usually have an agenda of trying to sell you something differently, but I would not say they're out there as a watchdog for you. They're self-serving some sort of product they're trying to sell. The one I hear very much uh, that I hear commonly is, well, don't buy rental real estate in your IRA because you don't get the depreciation. And I, that really rubs me wrong because they're, they're using misdirection. Yeah. Now, is it true that the depreciation is not going to flow to you personally when your IRA buys a rental? Correct. That's absolutely right. But did you buy the rental for depreciation? No. Yeah. Why did your IRA buy this rental? Because it's getting a better run, better rate of return than the freaking ETF or mutual fund you had in there last week. I was giving a presentation earlier this week and, I, and there was a room, probably a 35 people, and I said, who has some exchange traded funds or mutual funds in a trading account? A third of the room raised their hand. I said, great. What's your average return? And, what would, and they were all seven. I said, what's the best rate of return that would you just be getting? Nine percent? I said, great. How many of you own rental real estate in the room? Another yeah. third or fourth of the room. And I said, okay, on a rental property, someone give me an example. And we started going through the cash flow, the tax benefits, everything. And even without depreciation. Appreciation, yeah. Yeah, with the, the appreciation and the tax yeah. benefits, the pay down on the mortgage. I have my four quadrants of rental real estate I teach on YouTube. But people were averaging 20% or better with the same $10,000 investment. So are you gonna take your 10 grand and go partner with someone on a little rental property, or are you gonna take the 10 grand to buy an ETF? It doesn't matter that it's real estate per se, what matters is what's your best rate of return? Yeah. And if for some reason, you know livestock and you live in Texas and you can buy cattle like no one's business and you're gonna buy 50 head of steers and have them raised on a third party farm that you're not doing the work. Can you do that? Yes. Do we have clients do that? Yes. Do they have some inside knowledge on the best cattle to buy? Certainly. And they take that same 10 grand and double it, double it. Yeah. And I, 
I always on the, the we get do get that a lot. There's some other videos out there about don't buy real estate in your IRA. And they're saying because you can't take depreciation on it. Well, IRAs don't pay taxes, okay? What do I need depreciation for if I don't pay taxes? What, what am I gonna use the depreciation for? The IRA's not gonna pay tax. I just don't get why that why I would want that. So um, so remember when you're making the cash flow on it, the rental income, the capital gain when you sell it, you're not paying tax. You're building up tax deferred if it's a traditional and totally tax free in the Roth. So yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's, let's wrap up for today. We have, um, the next podcast again is going to be on prohibited transaction rules. And then we're going to hit IRA LLCs or checkbook control IRA. So we're trying to drip this out, hopefully, uh, make it digestible for those of you that are newer. And for those of you that have already made self-directed investments to, to kind of brush up on these rules and maybe here's some things you haven't thought of to do in your own account yet. Okay. And for those on YouTube, uh, we're going to, after we, uh, when we are doing our final mixer of the video uh, version of this, we're going to put that uh, diagram up there of the pie chart showing the allocation of assets in America from pretty valid source here, what our mix of assets are. Uh, so hopefully that gives you some great ideas. That's what this show's about. We want you to feel like you're in control of your retirement not someone driving the car telling you what you can and can't do like a child under age 12. This is your retirement account, freaking invested in what you know best. So that's what we're about. We're, you keep coming back. We'll keep bringing you the goods. Matt, thank you for being an awesome co-host. You rock. Hey, my pleasure. Always a good time here with Mark Kohler. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you, everybody. Talk to you next okay. week.